Um, just for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Erica. I am a self-taught oil painter from Portland, Oregon. I am a mommy to two little kids, and I currently make an original piece of art every single day, and I share my journey online. So today's class, um, we're going to be discussing how to do color mixing, which is kind of Actually, not kind of, it totally is my all-time favorite thing to do with oil paint. Um, we do have the Gamlin team in-house today. We have Mary. Hi, everybody. Yeah, do you want to introduce yourself, Mary? Hi, everybody. I'm Mary. I'm here to help moderate, answer questions, and just be available if anyone has questions related to Gamblin. Uh, we also have rest of the gambling team in the chat too to help if you want to shoot us a message uh we'll, we're really excited to have everyone here today yeah so any questions feel free to shout them out and um if you have any questions later mary can you tell them how to get in touch with you guys like i think you go to the gambling website right yeah, gamblingcolors.com and we'll be putting that in the chat too uh just a reminder if you have a question and we're unable to get to it today we have a lot of great info on the gambling website and if mm -hmm. you send us an email we like to get back to people real quick with their questions okay awesome okay so that's cool so color mixing it is probably the one thing it is actually is the thing that made me love oil painting because you can get so much different colors just out of one tube and you can have like, you just need to have a basic knowledge of color mixing and mix so many colors. And what's cool about it is it's like, you can go deeper and learn more. Like, I feel like even though I've been oil painting for a long time, I'm still learning but you don't need to know a lot to get started and have it be a beautiful piece. So, okay. So for those of you that haven't been with us the last few weeks, let's just go over supplies really quickly. Um, so this is what we're going to be using today. We are using the, and I'll put it here. We're using the 1980s oil color gambling set. And like I said before, this is everything you need in order to get started. And what I love about this set is that it also comes with this really cool panel by American Easel. And they're out of Salem. Is that right, Mary? Yep. They're our friends down in Salem, Oregon. Yeah. And, you know, Gamblin's from Portland. So what's cool about when you're purchasing this, like you're buying something that's locally made and they actually pay really awesome quality to uh, making sure you're getting really quality materials. And um, I use this at, in my studio and um, I love it. Every, I have no complaints. <laughs> so let's go through what you're actually going to be getting in the set. Um, so you're going to be getting um, your Owl's Crimson, your Cad Red Light, uh, your Cad yellow light for like that electric yellow and then you're going to get your earth tone yellow ochre which is fantastic my favorite green which is actually in my current palette is your thalo green your ultramarine blue which is beautiful titanium white and then uh this week we're going to be using the solvent free gel and then um i do have one question from last week mary because i know we went over mediums last week but i wanted to kind of touch on that why did you guys pick the solvent free for for the 1980 set oh that's a really good question we wanted to with the 1980 set have it be not only a great palette to give people the best options for color mixing, but we wanted to have a medium included in it that is just an all-purpose, great product for thinning your colors, speeding up the dry time a little bit, and it just gives paint this nice, juicy quality to it that, that you don't have sometimes straight from the tube. And it's one of our most popular mediums, and it also is non-toxic you know it doesn't require ventilation to use or work with so we we stand that the solvent free gel is just a great one for someone who's a beginner and learning oils or even like a non-beginner because yeah. i don't really know that much about mediums to be honest but i it's like one of those things where you just need a little and it goes a long way so i just wanted to ask that because i didn't get it to it last time i forgot <laughs> and um 
So we're going to be painting um, on the artist's lofts. It's like this. Um, I have the gallery wrapped heavy duty canvas, um, but you know, feel free to paint on a panel or whatever you have handy. Um, so yeah, and then I'm using the artist loft. I have palette paper. And then we're also using, let me get this out to show you guys. We're using for our mineral spirits, your Gamsol. And your Gamsol is basically like your water or um, it also thins out the paint, but it's my favorite mineral spirits. And um, I got, this is the mini right here. And we put it in this jar. And even though it's like muddy, it's still good. And I've been using the same, like I have not added anything to it and it's, been what, like three weeks. Mm -hmm. So it lasts for a really long time, especially when you put the lid on. Um, I recommend a glass container with a screw top lid. Okay. So then it doesn't spill and get yucky. Okay. So, okay. We went over everything here. Oh, and we have to get our brushes. I picked out some artist left brushes. I know we had a couple questions last time. And what I did was I just went to Michael's and I just picked out a set that I thought looked good. I like a synthetic brush or, um, and I just feel like this feels really good in my hand. So anything that you have handy, whatever feels good uh, is what I recommend. So these are size two and three rounds. And then I have a flat and this is a six. So, but you don't have to use exactly what I have. You can just feel free to use whatever you have handy. But I do like a brush where all the bristles are not frayed and um, soft, but that's me. Okay. So we have our paper towels, we have our canvas, and this is what we're making. And I thought that instead of in the past weeks, I've been giving you guys photo references, um, of just, you know, something that I set up and I, you know, use in my regular practice, but I thought today would be kind of fun to do something a little different. Um, and that's paint from real life. Um, because I think what's kind of cool is that you can just paint anything that you have laying around handy and you don't have to have, um, you don't have to set it up. You can just paint what's inspiring you around you. Um, so that's, what's kind of fun. So I did um, some paint, a paint tube. And so we all have our paint tube. So why don't you take a minute and kind of lay it out and whatever you think I did a straight shot right in the middle for this original one, but I did my sketches ahead of time and I just kind of did them around what I thought would look good on my canvas. So feel free to do, when you start sketching, just feel free to do one tube or two tubes or whatever you, whatever feels good for you. Um, and I felt like doing more than one tube. So, okay. And um, so let's talk a little bit about color while you are sketching. Okay, so let's talk about what we have in our set. So we basically have a really good base, but let's talk about the color wheel really quick. And then is, and I just want to make sure it's down here. So like I told you before, you have to have a basic, I dropped, I dropped my 1980 set. Everything's fine. So um, you just have to have a really basic knowledge of the color wheel. This is something like my kids learned in preschool. And I promise you, that's all you need to know. Um, so I put my red on top, my green here, and then I have, let's see, orange, yellow, blue, purple. Okay, so our primaries are red, yellow, and blue, right? Okay, red, yellow, blue, okay? And our secondary colors are what? Orange, green, and purple. And so your secondary colors are your two primaries that are mixed together that make that color. So your red and yellow make orange, right? Your yellow and blue make green, your blue and your red make purple, okay? So that's all you need to know. So you already know how to color mix, right? That's all, that's, that's it. So like just having this basic knowledge is like, all you really need to know to get started in color mixing. And what I love about oil painting is that's why you don't need a lot of tubes. So what's cool about it is it's like really, even though Gamma gave you a ton of paint, you really don't need all these tubes. They kind of gave you more to play with, which is really cool. So, okay. I'll put that, okay, that was my end of my, the paper lecture. 
So, okay, we have that. And then, um, oh, and one thing I wanna touch on too, as while we're looking at the color wheel, is to go over your complementary colors. So your complementary colors are your colors that lay across from each other on the color wheel. So my favorite complementary colors is Christmas. It's red and green. Um, so if you mix these two colors, you make your gray or your black. And it's kind of that, this color right here, right? And you're gonna use that color throughout your work. And it's, it's like your black and your gray. And you don't have to mix a bunch of other colors to make that color you already have it with these two colors. And you can do that with any complementary color. And what's really cool, Mary, I don't know if you've ever did this because Mary went to art school, I didn't. Um, what's a really fun exercise um, is to make a painting which is complementary colors. Mm -hmm. Because if you really wanna learn about color, it's having less. It really is, it truly is. And that's called a limited palette. Yeah, and it's when you have that limited palette, you have to train your brain and think a little bit more about what you're mixing. Because the worst thing is when you end up with a bunch of muddy colors. So our hope today is to give everybody a comprehensive idea on how to work with a limited palette. If you're in that scenario where you don't have the full spectrum, all you need is three or four colors. And as long as you have the primaries, you're going to be set. Yep. And I even drew a wheel for you guys so that it looks like a wheel. But honestly, like I had, this is my old one from like 10 years ago when I first started, I got it at Michael's. And if I need a quick reference, I just look at it because sometimes I just space out and I'm like, okay, what is the, what's across the way from ye yellow, you know? Oh, it's purple. Okay. Um, so, but so you can easily make your own or you can just buy a little like thing that you have around your studio or, you know, just tucked away just for memory. Okay. So let's get to laying out our palettes. Okay. So let's lay it out. Okay. So this is my favorite. One of my favorite parts is like, even though these aren't fresh tubes, if you have a fresh tube, that's like the best. It's like that first bite of apple where you just mm -hmm. unscrew it and just put it down. And I'm just laying out all the colors for you, but I just wanna let you know that when I practice at home in my studio, I only lay out the colors I really need. I don't really put like all of these colors down. I just put what I'm using, um, you know, but you don't have to, but you can't. Okay, and so if you remember, I always said less is more, so you don't need a ton of paint on there because a little paint goes a long way. And you can always add more. Okay, green, ultramarine blue. Okay, so everyone, we're using uh, from left to right on the palette, we got alizarin crimson followed by cad red light, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, phthalo blue, ultramarine, oh, I mean, phthalo green. green, excuse yeah. me, phthalo green, and then ultramarine blue, and then last but not least, your titanium white, and if you're like, use a lot of titanium white. So oh my I, have gosh. To, I have to give myself an extra big stuff when, when I get to that. And I just started buying the big, I call it the mama tube because it's like the big, the big tube. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, and I also put a little bit of solvent free gel down. Okay. So let's go you guys. Okay. So I just want to kind of touch on um, how to get started because a lot of questions that I receive is like, how do I get started? Like, how do you approach um, a painting? So two things. One, I'm kind of the personality where I just like to dive in and just go for it. Um, but I want to give you a couple little tips to like help, help you. Um, so the first thing is, um, a good practice is dark before light. If you don't know how to get started, um, start with the dark colors because it's easier to do the dark and then the white can just kind of lay on top. Okay. So let's get out our brush and get going. So I'm going to start with doing the shadow and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix my 
complementary colors and I'm using a number three round and that phthalo green and that cad red. And what I'm doing when I'm mixing here is when I'm trying to get that perfect kind of that black or that gray, it's I want to think about it as 50 50. So I want to get that 50 50. So 50% green, 50% red. But if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Um, you know, it's just kind of like what you want to go for. Okay. So let me get a little bit more. Okay. And actually, I'm going to lay out a couple tubes for me. Let me just get over here. So I have my reference out. Okay. So I'm just going to start and lay in my shadow and you know, it's a little dark for me, but I think what I want to do is I want to make it a little bit more green and you can use your artistic license here to kind of make your shadow. And I'm just going around my tube. Okay, keep going. How's everyone doing? There. And like instantly, you can kind of see how, just by even laying in that shadow, that hard shadow is like you can see how that paint tube is just gonna sit on top, give you a little bit more depth. And I think that's why I like shadows so much is because it gives a really kind of dynamic quality to the painting. So Mary, I have a question for you. Go for it. Okay. So I really want, since I have you here, since this is kind of like, I feel like it's a treat because, okay, so I'm self-taught from just like reading things online, watching videos, but I want to know, since I have an expert, uh, an expert <laughs> is, I want to know, can you tell me a little bit about how um, the quality of the pigments that you guys use, like how does that set you apart from everybody else? Because I love your paint quality. So I want you to tell me a little bit more about the pigments. Oh, well, thanks first. That's really nice of you. Um, and great question too about our paints specifically. Our pigments that we use are some of the highest quality available for artists. And when we are looking into pigment, which is, you know, one of the most important raw materials that go into an oil color. We want something that is going to last, meaning it's not going to fade with time. We're looking for pigments that are bright and vibrant and give artists the full potential in terms of color mixing, saturated, beautiful colors. Uh, that was one of the things that Robert Gamblin really wanted to focus on when he started our company was luscious, beautiful colors available to artists, but also having colors that are safe. So that's another part of a thing that sets us apart is all the pigments we use are non-toxic. Wouldn't ever send anything to your studio or anything into a landfill that was gonna be harmful for a person, an animal, or the environment. So that, that with the other factor that the main ingredients besides pigment that go into our paints is also oil, vegetable oil, and refined linseed oil that's used in these colors is derived from simply pressed flaxseed, which is non-toxic and actually nutritional food source. I know, flaxseed muffins, hello, right? It was kind of our main mission when we're... You want to make colors that give you the full potential mm -hmm. in that capacity, but are also safe and for you to use that your work is beautiful and it lasts for, for, oh gosh, it can last as long as several centuries. We have a good 
five, 600 years of history now to show that oil painting is a really permanent art form. And you were telling me, I know we were talking before and you were telling me that, and I love this and I didn't know this and I thought it was super worth mentioning that it's, you guys ethically source your materials too, right? Yeah, that's another thing too. Like our flax is, is uh, sourced from North American flaxseed farms. And when, when we're looking at our pigments, it a lot of time goes into making sure our pigment sources are also ethical. Um, well, like it makes me like love the paint even more because I've always like just kind of bought Gamblin because you guys have been from here and I love like the heart that you guys put into your product, but it's cool that you guys are thinking about the things like it feels like a good product to trust where you can be like, oh, okay, well, I know mm -hmm. that I'm buying something that's really good quality and supporting, um, you know, supporting the right things, right? Yeah, and we're always looking for new ideas too, like new colors, new products. So if anyone out there in the video has an idea, maybe at the back of their mind. Yes, yeah. let us know. I wanna know what you yeah. think. Like a special color, something on your palette that you don't see that you would really like to see from us. Never be shy about shooting us an email or or letting us know like if, if there's something that you want to see from us because mm -hmm. we love hearing from people. That's so cool. I love that. Okay, so I'm making a mental note to write an email with all of my questions hey, and colors Erica, that I need. Do you mind scooting your painting just a little closer to um, the, the palette? This way? Yeah. Perfect. Just an inch or two closer. Perfect. Okay, cool. There. Now everyone can see it Good. a little bit better. Cool. Okay, is that better? Maybe? Yeah, that is okay. perfect. That so, is perfect. Absolutely. Okay, so we have our shadow. Are we good, everybody? Okay. So we are going to do, oh, our lid. So our lid is black. And don't worry about the details, you guys. Let's just block in some color. And let's get that lid on to each little tube. I liked how I talked in a really cute voice for these tubes of paint. <laughs> cute little tubes of paint. <laughs> okay. So let's get our tubes on. Cute. And what I love about making art like this, like this is something that's super fun that you can hang anywhere to kind of give you some inspiration. Okay, so we have these caps. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to work on this gray right here. And so we already had that black mixture that I mixed. Remember the half green, half red, right? And then we just add a little touch of white. And look, boom, you have gray. See how easy that was? Okay. And then here's a little trick. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little trick about the grays. So if you want that kind of silvery quality, you add a little touch of yellow ochre. And learning how to mix oil paint, like you'll learn like, oh, I just need a little dab of this, a little dab of that. But you know what? You don't have to. That's something for you to play with if you want to. And also what's kind of cool about mixing your own color is like when you walk around and you're looking at inspiration, you can be like, oh, I can make that color. I know how to do it. I don't need any help, you know? And it's, that's what the cool thing is. You can be like your own color detective. Yes. Figure it out. But I, like my new, like, actually this has always been, is um, I'm not like an exact colorist where there are some that really want to get as close to real as possible. But I always like to make my own version of that color where it's like more vibrant or more like however I want to see it look. So it doesn't always have to be super realistic. Erica, we had someone ask a really good okay. question, really good question. 
they're asking, um, they often do black or very dark colors. And they say sometimes it makes their artwork look really harsh. Do you have any tips on how to get a good balance between light and shadow and, and the shades in a work? Do you have any tips on how to maintain that balance and not have things be too dark in the painting? Um, well, I think what was honestly one of the biggest game changers for me with learning about paint is like, first of all, like, I know you had the question about like the dark on dark, but it's really like, for me, I had to really take away using white because <laughs> white kind of absorbs the color, first of all. Um, um, but, and it's kind of like when you start adding in, like, it's easier to start adding it in little by little versus just being like, because then it's harder to go dark. It's harder to get those dark colors. So I think if you're, you're saying like, okay, how do I get like the dark shadow and I'm doing dark work? I think it, that's okay. Play in your shadow because if you're using your like ivory black, I don't even know. I didn't even put it out because yeah, I don't, we I don't need use it that I don't too. Yeah. Cause um, that's, what's cool about mixing your own colors. You don't need it. But like, if you're using your ivory black and you're like having trouble, like kind of distinguishing the different darks, take it away less, less. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a kind of a fun challenge when you don't have a lot of colors to play with, because then it makes you find those different variants. How would you answer that, Mary? Like, oh, I think you answered it great. I think it's finding your own happy balance because mm -hmm. honestly, every painter is different. I've known a lot of painters over the years. Some of them have a lot of, of darker values in their work. And sometimes it becomes like a signature to their style. So if, if you personally feel like you're having too much shade, Mm -hmm. Maybe consider that that's maybe just your preference or style yeah, maybe. or your style and embrace, or you can always change up your style no matter what though. And I think that's always cool because like the one thing I have to say being kind of like always being like self-taught where I just feel like I'm just diving in. It's like, there's this whole room to play where you don't have to feel so structured. So if you're having trouble with the darks, I would just say, take away, take a less is more, um, try to not use ivory black or a Mars black, just mix your own black. And there's like a ton of different recipes for black. Like my favorite is like cad red and thallo green, um, or like an ultramarine blue and a burnt umber mm -hmm. is great. That's a good one. Yeah. Or I recently discovered, um, is, uh, uh, sienna, a uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, mm. which I thought was really, it's kind of like a deep, deep purple, but it's like, but it's close enough to black where you're like, oh, okay, it's black. So, um, but how do you, do you mix your own black or? I do. And what's kind of, this is a great opportunity. We're such painters yeah. and I love it. I love it. We so do at Gamble and have a really special black oil color that's unique. Oh, what is it? Wait, wait, okay. What is this? Let, let's see. Oh. And, and what it is, is it's a mixture of your, your Here, dark, dark green and your deep, deep crimson, like, like Christmas colors oh. together. And it's already been pre-mixed in the tube okay. and ready to go. And if, mm. if someone mixes their own black a lot and wants to maybe save a couple extra moments um, in their practice, not having to pre-mix it every time, mm -hmm. that chromatic black is a really, really beautiful choice because compared to ivory or Mars, it's mm -hmm. a lot more nuanced. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answered your question um, because now I'm like really curious to see what you're making. So definitely share it. Um, okay, so let's get started on the paint tubes. So when I'm looking at the paint tube, I'm just gonna be doing the white part because the reason why is I really want the color of the tube to be like my lots of paint moment of the piece. So yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. So this little swoosh, which is kind of my favorite part, is going to be last. Save the best for last, which is really hard for me because I love indulgence and I love, um, you know, all the treats. So it's hard for me to wait. But that's what you do is those special moments save for last. Okay, so white. And then I'm just going to use some more of that gray, you guys. Like, 
That's it. And you know what's funny is so far we've used all of like three paint colors and a touch of that yellow ochre. We haven't used any of the other colors yet. So I just want to kind of illustrate like you don't need a lot to like make really cool paintings. Yeah, you just need three colors. That's all you need. So let's start getting in that tube. Okay. And to anyone wondering what um, that little jar up there that Erica is using to clean the brush out, that, that has the Gamsol, the thinner in it. You don't need it. You could use like your, your towel to wipe the paint off, but Gamsol does a really nice job of just really quickly getting any color that you don't want out of the brush. And so then you have a clean brush that you can keep using with different colors. And that way your colors don't get all yeah. muddy on you and um, makes it a little bit easier for color mixing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So my next question is, is like, and I get asked a lot, I get asked this a lot on Instagram is like, what is your current palette? What do I currently use? And to be honest, I use a lot of these colors that are in this like kit. Um, so the colors that I use on a regular basis are, I definitely use the Cad Red. It's my fave. Um, number one, I use the I use the lemon yellow instead of the cad yellow light, um, which I think are kind of like, you know, on the same page, but I really, um, I like the lemon yellow a little bit better for me, um, but this still works just as great. And then I have yellow ochre handy, but it's like, I don't use it all the time. Um, phthalo green is a must. Ultramarine blue is a must. Titanium white is a must. And I sometimes use burnt umber and that's my palette. And Mary, I would love to hear what's oh, yeah. on your palette. Well, I'm glad you asked. Keith Cole in the comments just now was talking to folks about our modern organic pigments. Oh, what is that? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Tell, me, oh, tell, me, no. tell me more. The modern pigments. Well, they are mostly colors that are very transparent and they pack a lot of punch. Uh, my favorite three to use as a primary color palette and Pete just listed these in the in the uh, chat thread is the Hansa yellows, the phthalo blue, mm -hmm. and quinacridone red. The, those three right there are the all star primaries for me personally. Mm. And the reason why I choose them is because they make really bright secondary and tertiary mixes. Like if you need a really, really bright orange, or if you want a beautiful purple. It's really hard to get a color like cadmium red to make a nice bright purple. It kind of makes more of like a muddy gray purple. And the quinacridone I think is- we have one because yeah. we were talking about this yes. before yeah. and like we talked about the challenge of getting that hot pink, Barbie pink. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And this is, this is kind of the secret. And then the magenta one. Yeah. So quinacridone red, quinacridone magenta. If anyone has been struggling making like a really nice purple or pink, those quinacridones are going to be the ticket for you. Absolutely. So what were you saying? So you were, okay. So you use, what was that? Oh, just those three, those three modern organic, ah. phthalo blue, quinacridone red, and the Hansa yellow. Mm -hmm. Those are, those are my top three choices just because they give you the best, um, capabilities for mixing. They're, they're awesome for that. And then I thought what would be really fun to talk about. So what I run into is like, so I get the painting kit, right? And then I'm like, well, what do I get next? Like I go into the paint store and it's like a kid in a candy store and I end up buying paint that I don't necessarily use like a lot where I just get like distracted because it's like a beautiful color. But I thought it would be really fun to talk about like what beyond this set could you add to your collection that would make your paintings better? Um, and not just better, but just like really add to um, your palette. So first, what I used for a really long time, instead of ultramarine blue, I used cobalt blue and I loved it for a long time. And then I fell back in love with like ultramarine blue, but cobalt blue is fun. Or lately, my secret jam um, has been a uh, Prussian blue, which is like, makes the perfect navy. It like is gorgeous. So what's your favorite colors, Mary, that you think like if someone had this basic palette, what could they get next? Um, if you have the basic palette, you have a lot of good options, but a couple that I really like and in place of phthalo green, 
I might recommend folks try Phthalo Emerald oh, in the future. And not Viridian. Yeah, Phthalo Emerald is one of my favorites because it's like Phthalo Green, but it's a lot warmer. That, that one's one I often recommend to people when they're expanding their palette. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, so, okay, so we went through the reds, like what you would recommend. For how about yellow? And you said Hansa yellow. Hansa kind yellow. of the secret. Like mm-hmm. that's been your kind of favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then green would be emerald green. What about your blue? What would you pick for kind um, of a swapping out of a blue? Well, if someone has a normal primary blue and right. you want to switch things up, something you could always consider looking at is like a teal. Like, Ooh. like cobalt teal is a really pretty color. It's very opaque. Or we have a beautiful color called phthalo turquoise which is a combination of phthalo blue and phthalo green together. So if someone was looking to, you you know, expand their palette, those ones would be really fun to pick. And then I know, and then also, okay, so for whites go, the titanium white is like my go-to forever. Like I buy the big tube, it is something you will use and use and use. But one thing I've been, been experimenting with lately has been warm white, which has been super fun because it's so creamy and so delicious. Um, but how about you? What's your favorite white? If you had to not use titanium white, what white would you recommend? Well, you talked about the warm white. I always like to mention cool white because, uh, <laughs> you know, you go both sides of the temperature spectrum. You got a warm white and right. then it is really nice if you want a white that's just got a little bit of blue in it. Mm-hmm. That one is really excellent. That's so cool. Okay, I'm just filling in my paint tubes. I have to get caught up, you guys. You guys are probably way ahead of me. Do you guys want to show up your work and see? Like, I love, my favorite thing is when you guys all hold it up and then you, you can all see, like, what everyone has been doing. Let's see them. Oh, I see you. Mary, do you want to say, like, who's holding up what? Let's ooh, see it, everybody. Ooh, let's see. Let's see who's going on here. All right. Ooh. Jessica's painting looks really awesome. I like so the paint too. Yeah, that was and like out. Carrie's painting looks great. Colleen, Lucy. Hey, everyone. Wow. We love watching what you're making. Oh, that's oh, so cool. And I love the smiles. Elise, guys. I love your painting too. That looks great. Oh, everyone. Oh my gosh. There's so many good paintings right now. I'm almost overwhelmed. Ooh, Kathy, I like your orange background. <laughs> So good, you guys. All right, this is looking good. And what I did right here was I just added, so I took my green, red and green mixture and I just added to like make a little bit of a variant right there. That's it. And then, okay, I need to get painting you guys because you guys are beating me. Not that it's a race or a contest, it's not, but okay. Let me shake and bake on this a little bit. So I have to ask Mary, since you're here, okay, mm-hmm. what is next? What colors are you guys like cooking up? Like, can Ooh. you tell us? Can well, you give I, us like a sneak, like a sneak peek? Like putting the pressure on the, the problem is... <laughs> We can't give away too many secrets. I know that you guys just unfortunately just released one new that kind of gives back. Mm-hmm. That what's the, can you tell us about it? Oh, that was our equality orange is what that was. That. Um, more info about that if you want to check it out is at the Gamblin website. And also our our new online factory store is available for people. And we don't have a whole lot there at the moment, but we are going to be like, if we release a limited edition color, our online factory store is going to be the place where you can find out info on that. So do go check it out at the Gamblin website. You can sign up to get, um, you can sign up to get notifications when we do release special new colors. I can't give away any secrets right now because it's it's just two, oh my two top secret. I, just, I put you guys on the spot <laughs> because I live for the the new like I it's like you know when you go to the store and you go to see like oh what's the new thing? Oh I know, but but trust me, when we do release new products, we shout it from the rooftop so everyone knows. So you'll you'll find out if you're subscribed to our emails or if you follow us on social media. Okay, cool but I did like that orange color. What was the inspiration for the color? Uh, The color itself, Equality Orange, was one that we were making um, 
to support equality for all, mm -hmm. for, for people who want to help out right now during a tough time. We sold out of the color is the reason, is the, <laughs> is the main reason why I don't want to uh, talk about it a whole lot, just because I would, I would hate for people to get really excited about it and then go find that it's not there anymore. So, but I love that you guys like are constantly thinking up new colors because that's the whole fun about color mixing. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not just mixing your own colors it's like oh what are you mixing like so um on social media like i'll see other oil painters and i'm always curious like how did you make that or how did you do that and so that's kind of like the whole fun of it when you start mixing color is it comes down to just like oh what are you making that's new or what's mm -hmm. kind of the fun color and like i mentioned at the beginning of this if there is ever a color out there we that you all would want to see from us we really encourage you to get on email let us know we love hearing from people and knowing what they want to see i know what's your new it's like what's the new favorite color Lately, my favorite color to mix has been navy, that Prussian blue. I just like can't, I go through like these color phases where I'll just get obsessed with a tube. But like um, some past loves have been like phthalo green or cad red light. Um, I'm still loving phthalo green. Like I feel like it's one of those colors where I was like super like, I'm just going to be honest. I was like, it's kind of like this blue green or I didn't really like it, but then I like played with it and i was like oh my gosh this is this is the best color ever you know um because it makes all the colors like that you need and it gives you that mm -hmm. vibrant like just even mixing it like this color right here is just mixing thalo green and white and we'll get there once we finish up the paint tubes but it's like i it's i can't get enough it's like that toothpaste color but it's yeah. not toothpaste it's like that cool toothpaste color so in the chat, Jessica is talking about how her favorites are indigo and earthy greens. I like earthy greens too. We were too. just talking yeah. about that. Yeah, it's so green here in Portland lately. We've had a really, really wet June. We had a lot of rain over the last month. Uh, what in the chat, does anyone else want to talk about what colors they liked a lot? Yeah, tell or, us your favorite yeah, colors. Yeah. Like anyone got something new right now that, that they're just like so excited about. I love that. Ooh, so LJ likes magenta. I love me magenta too. too. I love me magenta. Too. Me too. Sap green, that's another good one. You know, Ooh, two I, sap greens. I Ooh. Sap green. Okay, look, let's talk about sap green. Let's talk about sap green. So sap green I used forever. Like I did. I'm gonna be honest. And I was like loved it and then i discovered thalo green hello but it's still a beautiful color tried and true soft green yeah. oh my gosh yeah. like <laughs> the dramas of the green <laughs> 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 right um something a funny side story yeah. robert gamblin loves color and he told me wait no way of course he does <laughs> no way <laughs> he mentioned this funny story once about how he had an on and off relationship with green and yes. No. <laughs> after that's a while, he didn't touch green for years, and then and then he had a resurgence out of the blue. Did he make his own green, or did he just like? I think he would mix his own greens, but then for a while, he just didn't use it at all. Just I wonder didn't what use he mixed all. to make his yeah. green. Yeah. Because I'm always kind of curious because it's like mm -hmm. it doesn't beat thalo green. No, guys. that's your, that's doesn't. obviously what you're in love with. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. It's like. I ha it ha the you know it's like you just love it i just i feel like it's like i haven't conquered the color mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. so like there's so much to learn to it oh i love all these uh color uh topics people so someone mentioned how they they uh like neutral grays and titanium white i feel you there sometimes i just want to go black and white no color you know some days you just have that day where you want to have neutrals and not a lot of intensity and, you know, do what, do what you love. If that's what you like, go for it. Um, you know, my favorite gray out of the tube is Portland gray mm, yeah. favorite. Mm -hmm. I, okay. So I don't know if you know this, Mary, but like maybe Pete could answer this in the chat, but how did they come up with Portland gray? Because I feel like Portland has so many grays because <laughs> it's like, we're so cloudy here. I mean, it really is like, so how did you guys come up with finding the perfect gray? 
Well, there's three. It's oh. always it's always good to mention there's three of them. There's a light, a medium, and a deep. Okay. And what the Portland grays really offer are giving folks a neutral gray that you can use to adjust mm -hmm. the value of your color mixture, but it doesn't change the temperature of the color. Like it doesn't throw it too warm or throw it off too cool. And that's what's kind of unique about those Portland grays. Um, they get their name from our not so sunny city here. We have a lot of rainy oh weather gosh, in Portland. It, it has been. Gone. Today's sunny, which is kind of an abnormality, but the Portland grays are really nice if you want a nice neutral gray for color mixing or just on its own. It's beautiful. Okay. This looks good. So let's see if I can get to it. This last one. How's everyone doing? How's everyone's pictures? Are they looking good? Everyone having fun? Yes. Okay. I'm getting my tube and I'm just still mixing the gray, that gray, and I lightened it up and that's all I did. Okay. And I'm just thinning it out in my mineral spirits and we're just going more white because I'm out of paint on here. Okay. Let's just fill it in. There we go. So Allison in the chats talking about how to make a really deep purple. What we were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, using this. Yeah, using this Michael set that we have oh, here. Oh, using the Michael set. Yeah, with the with the colors available on today's palette, you were using the cadmium and what sound like a little bit of ultramarine blue. What I would recommend you try doing with this specific palette here is actually using that alizarin crimson. That's what I was Yeah, saying. we so, haven't touched it at all, but this one is yeah. a great one. If you wanna get a really nice purple, you would mostly use that alizarin and then put a tiny, tiny little touch of the ultramarine blue in there. And we're, we'll do a, um, just just uh, to since we're focusing on the painting, we'll just mm -hmm. tell you about it. But that is going to make a really nice purple. Okay, so I just took a big, massive, I got a big brush out. It says it's three-fourths, but it's like really big. It's a flat brush. Let's Okay, so the background is kind of one of my favorite things to do. And just a touch of salad green. And look at that pretty color with just like, boom. And everyone's always like, how do you get that green color that you always get? Ooh. And it's like... That's it. So bright. Yep. And let's just lay it in. And I want it brighter, you guys. And just use your own creative license as to what, how green you want it. And like, what's cool about using a big brush is that you get these really cool, like brush strokes. I love using the big brush. Do you? Yeah, that's my favorite part. I could back and <laughs> forth, like where I want to like get in details, but I know I have to yeah. let go of the details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This painting's turning out great. Yeah. And then what's cool about using a big brush too is like getting really close to your edges so that those paint tubes will sit right on top. Like that. See, see how 3D it looks, you guys, by just doing the background. Sometimes you just do the background and it all comes together. It all makes sense. Okay. White. And you guys, like, for the backgrounds, I always like to make a big mess on my palette. I don't know what it is. But I think you were telling me, Mary, that you like to big, make a big mess on your palette. Oh, no I'm matter. messy. I'm so messy. I get it. I get my paint everywhere. So um, Rachel was asking if we're able to show the reference image. Uh, we would love to show it to you, Rachel. But the way we have our camera set up, it might be a little hard to show you the exact reference. But but thank you for asking. Okay, so. I went too far. And so what I did was I just grabbed my brush and I dipped it into that gray and I just went like that to get my tube of paint back. Okay. There we go. Okay. Let's get around. Okay. Dab. Hmm, I'm kind of feeling this brush, you guys. And what I love about 
getting, you know, n like, it, like brushes that are just really economical that are just not super expensive brushes is that it gives me the free license to not care <laughs> and to just kind of have fun mm -hmm. and not use like something super fancy. Okay. Let's get around those edges, you guys. Looking good. And then just when you're using your brush and you're going around the edge, you know, this is like your time to kind of get that shape of your paint tube and make your shadow stand out just like that. And you know, there we go. And just go slow and take your time around those edges. You don't have to go fast. It can be a bold, a bold move. Oop, I got that shadow. But do you see what I did here? I pulled the paint up where it streaked and I fixed it by just going like this. Just like that. There we go. So let's go around. There. Boom, boom. All right. So what color should we make these paint tubes? Ooh, so many possibilities. Okay, so I think a cad red one, because that's like so cad red was my other after thalo green like i love like cad red is my favorite color to use to get those fluorescent color like that really electric color it just packs so much punch yeah it's just so bright okay so there we go boom okay we have our background okay so let's do our color Okay, get our paintbrushes out. Oof, mine's under here. Okay, so I dip it. And then what I wanna do is like get it really thick so it looks like, what I love about these tubes is it looks like a little paint, but I wanna make it more painterly so it kind of looks yeah. more like real paint. Erica, maybe get it a little closer to the camera so people can oh. see that, yeah. yeah. So it's like a swirl. I mean, you see these, you have yeah. them at home. Yeah, you have them in front of yeah. you. Yeah, and so what I like about kind of when you can play with it, as you can see in this, it's like you can kind of make it painterly. And when I say painterly, it's like where you could really see like the brush strokes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm using this flat, well, maybe I'll use a round. Okay, so let's do, and it's just the straight color because that's what the color is on the tube, right? So wherever you lay it down first, is you kind of want to go slow is where that the glop starts and then you just go like that and around swoosh i know it's like okay and then i get the bottom color okay and just like that and look how cute that looks that is really satisfying yes really okay. satisfying Okay, and then we're gonna do blue, ultramarine. I don't know why I liked cobalt blue for a long time. I just felt like super drawn. That was the my blue that I used. And then I kind of fell back into using ultramarine blue. Which blue do you use, were you saying? Well, I, think, blue? I think that both ultramarine and cobalt are really great blues. What, what cobalt gives you is bright opacity but ultramarine in my opinion is really pretty me personally i love that phthalo blue although the the one thing i would caution any of you out there if you try phthalo blue i have it i just got some it's intense like you want to so use phthalo green though yeah it's just phthalos it's yeah like something about the phthalo that makes it more just like like it's when we say that it it is a saturated color we mean it you yeah. will find it like if you get it on like one little piece of clothing, you'll find it. It'll everywhere. be there forever. Yeah. It'll be there forever. And if you get it in a color mix and you get too much of it <laughs> in there, then you're just going to be stuck with this really bright, bright color. But that really is one of my favorites is the, the phthalo blue and phthalo green, especially mixed together. Yes. Ooh, yes. I rarely mix the blues together. I have to say, it's like I pick one and then I just go with it. And you know what? Feel free to get super thick on this. I think it looks more special thick, I think, because then it's kind of like, I like the illusion of 
real versus not real, which is why I like the whole like thick paint kind of look in parts. So, okay, I got my yellow. And I have to tell you, after our conversation, Hansa Yellow is going to be like in my cart. <laughs> oh, yeah. For you should try it sure. out. I love it. Makes a really nice orange. Yes. How do you mix your orange? Like which, because um, some people just buy the CAD orange, but I don't, I like to mix it. I like, yeah, yeah I use CAD Red Light and then like a lemon or CAD mm -hmm. Uh, medium. Those work really well, but I think that a really nice um, orange you can get is with the Hansa yellow and then just a tiny, tiny touch of the, the quinacridone red makes for a really vibrant orange. I love that combo. All right, you guys. Okay. So we're getting close to being done and I just want to go over a couple of things before um, we have to run, but continue to do this, you know, and I want you to know that um if you guys could put uh, mary my instagram handle if you want to reach out if you have any questions at all or if you want to share your work um the gambling team and i like i have to say it's the highlight of the day when you guys send me what you're making because it's like so cool um and what's the hashtag it's i believe it's make it with michaels mm -hmm. uh so that michael sees it too because they love the community that they've created because how cool is that? Like people are making things and coming together, especially during this time. Oh yeah. We love seeing what everyone's making. So never shy about sharing your work. It doesn't have to be your greatest masterpiece. We, you know we want to see anything. It you make. Is it, I think yeah. <laughs> every work that you make, it's like your greatest thing that you've made so far. And then the next piece that you make mm -hmm. is going to be even better. Okay, so what I did was orange, or I'm sorry, not orange. Uh, we were just talking about orange. Cad red light, and then the green, and then the ultramarine blue. And then, okay, so we're going to make those caps really quick. And I'm just outlining them. And then just a dab of white. And that's it. And then a little touch of your medium, if you want to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the lines on my caps. Just like that. Just be really soft with your hands and less is more, you guys. And that's it. How cute are these tubes? And if you made your tubes, I think mine are a little wide. Um, and if you want to go back, if you choose to, you can make them a little smaller. Oh, I have too much stuff on my brush. Okay, let's try again. And this is when you can use your little brush and just kind of go back and like get around the edges. And then the next thing I want to talk to everyone about is next week, we're not going to be painting, but we're going to be talking about how to varnish painting. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I have to say varnish is the secret you guys, because when I first started oil painting, I'd be like, why do my paintings look like this? And I'd make this face like, and then I, and then someone's like, you have to varnish the painting and it can be intimidating yeah. we know oh, this, this it is, is so oh, no, okay listen yeah guys like if don't you, be like, scared like this is the easiest slam dunk you will do for your artwork yeah i promise it's the easiest thing ever yeah next week's gonna be epic so we hope everybody everybody tunes in and checks it out and it was just really nice painting along with everyone today yeah absolutely so yeah oh, oh yeah do we want so let's you guys, final pieces, everyone, let's show, show your work. Ooh, Kathy, I like how that looks like the solvent-free gel. Jessica's is great. Oh my gosh, so oh my good. Oh god, I um, love everyone's You guys, plans. you guys. Elise, Deborah, Julian, Lucy. Ooh, wow, guys, I, there's so many paintings. You guys, Rachel, so yours looks great, so does yours, Suzanne. Uh, Pauline, Crystal. Oh, wow, everyone. These are so nice. Everyone just made really beautiful work today. You guys, you guys did so good. Like it's, you guys are so talented. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I mean, like, I don't know. It's like people. Ooh, that one's nice. So way more talented than people are always like, oh, you know, I'm not talented. And then I see their work and it's like, Blows are mine. Just, you know, half of it is just making it. 
Yeah, so definitely tune in next week, everyone, if you want to find out more about varnishing. It's a fun topic and it'll help you lots. Yeah, we're going to go over varnishing, how to wire a painting, and then any last minute questions. um, I'm going to be putting up on my Instagram, like if there's any questions that you want to hear from me about my practice or if you want to ask an expert. Um, So we'll do a little bit of Q&A also. Uh, So if there's anything that you need to know, and honestly, varnishing will change your life. Like it is, if you don't varnish, you are missing out. And this, the varnish that Gamblin has, like I have been using it for years and years and years and it's amazing. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks everyone.